Agility is one of, if not the worst skill in the entire game. At least until sailing comes out, am I right? It's slow to train, it's monotonous, it just doesn't feel good. But in Jagex's defense, who could have seen the idea of running laps as being boring? I mean, if you have 99 agility, you should probably be on a watch list. And if you have 200 mil agility, you probably already are on a watch list. When agility was released back in 2002, the reason to train it was way different than the reason people train it now. New accounts these days will train agility just to get graceful as soon as possible, because graceful is a really useful thing to have. But that wasn't released until 2015 on Old School, and the equivalent in RuneScape 3 was released in 2009. The other big reason to train agility these days is for run regeneration. As the player base has gotten way too old to be playing this game, we've also grown to really understand the mechanics of it. So now we know that every agility level has an effect on how fast your run regenerates. Great, cool, love it. But back in the day, we had no idea. And yeah, maybe I was just too stupid because when I was a kid, all I would do was search RuneScape cheats and then try the same ones over and over again, wondering why they weren't working. And sure, maybe I did read a guide that once said the best way to start an account is to chop normal logs until you get 10k by selling it to the Lumbridge General Store. And so what if I took the money from those logs to buy a girlfriend only to immediately regret it, log in, message her in all caps, dumped, and then log out, but feel so guilty that I logged back in to apologize, and all she messaged me back was, it's K. So what? <laughs> the big appeal of agility back in the day was the shortcuts. You could be running around with your friend in the Dwarven Mine, and all of a sudden they go through that little crevice, and you have to run all the way around like some sort of dweeb. Agility was the first skill that wasn't production or gathering, but it was true character development, really changing how your player interacts with the world. It was a really cool idea, and the shortcuts were the manifestation of that really cool idea. So you'd think this big appeal of agility probably is really good, right? Wrong, you read the title, you know it's wrong. But how could I know that agility shortcuts suck without testing every single one? And that would take super long, there's over a hundred of them in the game. So I tested every single agility shortcut. That's right, Tedious, I have a spreadsheet too. I think it's pretty plain to see that I am clearly very mentally ill, but I also am very impassioned about this subject now. These findings shocked me, and I'm gonna break them down for you, but first, let's define what an agility shortcut is. For the purposes of this experiment, I wanted a shortcut to actually be a shortcut. For it to be a real shortcut, there needs to be a viable alternative way of getting to that spot, and the shortcut should hopefully speed up that process. Like these stepping stones in Brimhaven Dungeon, which is the only way to get further into the dungeon, that's not a shortcut, that's an unlock. Or the basalt rocks to get to the lighthouse. You can get there without agility, I did the whole run around. This saves you about 260 ticks, it's the best shortcut in the game. Except it's not really a shortcut, A, because it requires one agility, you can just use the basalt rocks whenever, and B, no one's going to actually run around, that would be stupid. I know I did it, and I am stupid. Unlocks are are cool and all, and they are a benefit of agility, but I'm angry about shortcuts today, okay? So we're just gonna ignore the unlocks. If you're curious about how I tested these, I'm not gonna go through it. Watch Soup's last myth-busting video, I basically did that. But what I will explain is how I generated these beautiful images using today's video sponsor, Wonder. Wonder allows you to generate art right on your phone using AI. You can take any idea simple or incredibly wild, and within a matter of seconds have high quality art in a number of different styles. The best part is Wonder is a free app, but with the premium version, you get a lot of new benefits. Those benefits include unlimited art generations, faster generation, no ads, which is a bit ironic, I'll grant you that you can get a free trial of the premium version by clicking the link in the description down below. If you don't believe me with how easy and fast it is to generate art on this app, well, I'm gonna show you, and you're gonna feel real stupid real fast. First, let's pick a subject, and personally, I'm partial to gnomes. So I'm just gonna type in a gnome. I feel like it's pretty fitting that it be doing agility. So let's say a gnome doing parkour. And we can space this up a little bit by saying it's doing parkour in the woods, like it's doing agility on the gnome agility course. And the last thing we have to do is pick our style. I'm gonna go with novelistic. It usually generates weirder stuff, which I think is gonna be fitting for this. Then we just hit create. And now we got a real gnome doing real parkour. I'm just gonna assume this is what parkour looks like. So you can see it's really fast to use. I personally love to use it to get inspiration for thumbnail ideas. And if you wanna try it out, don't forget to click the link in the description, get the free trial, the premium version. But let's talk about agility shortcuts again. 
Let's start with some of the bad shortcuts. These aren't the worst shortcuts, but they are bad. The pillars at Wintertod are often used for people doing Wintertod solos, and they're decent. They save you like three to five ticks versus running around, but the big drawback is you have to click each individual pillar to hop through the obstacle, and that's ridiculous. Jagex, what do you think this is? Some sort of clicking simulator? Absolutely not. These pillars also require 60 agility, which is like a little bit high, but it's fine. I think it's an okay shortcut, but then why is it in bad? It's in bad because it's at Wintertod, and Wintertod sucks. Staying in Karen, let's talk about an actually bad shortcut. We all know about Mount Karum. Karum? Karul? We all go to Konar for our Slayer assignment, so we've all used the two shortcuts that bring you up the mountain. And the two shortcuts combined are really great for getting up the mountain way faster than running around the whole thing. But you'll notice there are two shortcuts. The higher level shortcut requires 62 agility and saves you 40 ticks versus running around. That's really good. So you would hope that the lower level shortcut requiring 28 agility has a lesser but still good effect. Nope. It saves you four ticks. It actually requires fewer clicks to not use the shortcut. So it's probably better to just ignore it entirely unless you have 62 agility to use both shortcuts. Do you think that's good design, Jagex? Do you think that's a good shortcut design? And don't tell me 29 agility is such a low requirement that it shouldn't be that good because there are agility shortcuts with way lower requirements that save you way more time. So I don't want to hear it from you, mister or miss or misses. Enough about Karen, let's move east a little bit. Do you know what this is? Of course you don't, you're not a nerd. And if you did know it, uh-oh. This is the Elven Overpass, and its main benefit back in the day was being able to get to the Elf Land without needing to use the Underground Pass. One problem, you need to have completed Regicide to use it, and by Regicide, you can get Teleport Crystals, which came out just a few months after. So has anyone ever truly used this? No. But there are three agility shortcuts, and they are very interesting. The first two shortcuts you run into are kind of intertwined. One requires 59 agility, and the other requires 68. With 59 agility, you save 15 ticks, and with 68 agility, you save 21 ticks. So, okay, pretty Pretty good, wow, it gets you through way faster. That's a good shortcut. But the one way down here requires 85 agility. Wow, that's awfully high. So you'd think it's gonna be pretty good. Eight ticks. It saves you eight ticks. Both the lower level shortcuts save you more time than the one that requires 85 agility, one of the highest agility requirements for any shortcut in the entire game. And to cap it all off, it's in a completely useless area. I still don't really know why? I bet most of you don't even know that these shortcuts exist unless you have the Western Provinces Elite Diary completed, because I found out while recording this that that is apparently a Western Provinces Elite Step. And this is just a taste of these bad shortcuts. Sure, they save you time, but do they really, especially considering the agility requirement that a lot of them have? There's an even worse kind of shortcut in the game, and those are... Listen, I'm not the first to discover that grapple shortcuts are really fucking bad. Every like three months, there's a post on Reddit about like, hey, let us store our grapple or something. But would that actually make them better? Breaking news, no. These shortcuts are so inconvenient that you would hope at least they are some of the best time-saving shortcuts in the game. But actually, they are some of the worst, including the literal worst shortcut I could find. This shortcut on the Northern Falador Wall should save you a lot of time when running from Barbarian Village. The problem is, it took 21 ticks longer than just running around and through the main gate. 21 ticks. Using the shortcut itself, took 19. 19 ticks. Jagex, I get you were trying to be creative here. I do. What the fuck? <laughs> Almost all the other Granville shortcuts are either really, really bad too, or just in completely useless locations. Who has honestly used the grapple shortcut that goes from the water obelisk to the Catherby beach? And stop typing that comment saying that you've done that. You are a liar. I know you're a liar. Stop doing it. It's come to my attention while editing this video that doing exactly that is a diary step. So a lot of you probably have done it. Sorry for attacking you. <laughs> no one has actually run all the way through Taverly Dungeon, gone, made some water orbs, grappled over to Catherby, and then just gone back to Taverly Dungeon. Just teleport, just literally teleport anywhere else. Falador, it would make way more sense. It's psychotic, why is this here? But there is one grapple shortcut that is really, really good. It's actually one of the best shortcuts in the entire game. And that's this grapple shortcut next to the observatory. Jagex, I don't know what got into you when you made this shortcut, 
but well done. This shortcut saves you 80 to 90 ticks to get into the observatory versus running around that insane tunnel. And for that reason alone, it's great. But it's also really useful. There's a medium clue step in the observatory, so there's a really good reason to use this shortcut. But the best part? Mm. Oh, the best part of this whole shortcut. Once you use the grapple, it stays there forever. You use it once, the rope stays there. Why am I doing that? And you can just climb up it whenever you want. You never have to bring the grapple back. Jagex, do that everywhere. Please, I'm begging you. It's so good. <laughs> also, it only requires 23 agility. So again, don't give me shit about obstacles that require 29 agility needing to be bad. 23 agility, and it's great. So while not all grapple shortcuts are bad, almost every single one is, Yuck. Talking about that observatory shortcut really got me in the mood to talk about another kind of shortcut. So let's talk about the... So the... Oh my god. Hey, subscribing is good. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, I guess if you want to. Obviously not all agility shortcuts are bad. That would be insane. Some are really well designed, save you a lot of time and have logical agility requirements. Like the vine to get you to the Kazari jungle. It's useful for multiple clue steps. It saves you like 20 ticks and it requires 79 agility, which seems a little high, but I actually think is pretty fair. Or these two shortcuts on the way to the cosmic temple in Xanarus. The easier one saves you 10 ticks, the harder one saves you 20 ticks. And that's a really logical way to scale things. Sure, no one crafts cosmic runes this way anymore, but there was a time where this was genuinely great. Speaking of things no one ever does, this river salve shortcut saves you 23 ticks versus running around and it only requires 63 agility. There's a decent amount of good agility shortcuts, but there is the holy grail of agility shortcuts that have been in the game for decades. That feels like an exaggeration. And it's actually not one agility shortcut at all. It's three. The three shortcuts in the Taverly Dungeon is how all agility shortcuts should aspire to be. Each one requires a higher level, but in turn saves you more time and has additional benefits. Plus, the Taverly Dungeon is an iconic place that is useful from early game accounts trying to get 43 prayer at Blue Dragons to late game accounts trying to beat Cerberus. The first shortcut you can use in Taverly Dungeon is at 63 agility and it's this fence by the lesser demons. 63 agility is pretty low considering a lot of accounts will just get graceful right off the bat now. And even still, it saves you 50 ticks versus running around. The drawback is you still need the dusty key to access the rest of Taverly Dungeon. At 70 agility, which is a decently high agility level considering how bad the skill is, you can use this pipe squeeze to get right to the blue dragons, bypassing the need for a dusty key. This pipe will save you 121 ticks when running through the dungeon. 121 and you don't need a dusty key. Yeah, I think 70 agility is worth it. This pipe squeeze is is iconic because it's right next to the ladder. It is taunting you from the moment you enter Taverly Dungeon for the first time because you know your life could be so much better if you just got off your ass and trained agility. That's the kind of reward I want all agility shortcuts to have. Good agility shortcuts should motivate you to train agility so you could use them. And this is just the golden god of agility shortcuts. But if you want to get to the Black Demons or the Hellhounds or Cerberus, you're going to have to go through the Blue Dragons. And one dragon fire attack could cut your health in half. So you'll have to either bring a shield or sip a dose of anti-fire potion, and that's kind of annoying. Which is why there's still an incentive to go for the third obstacle. With 80 agility, the strange floor will put you past the black demons and past the blue dragons so you can get right to the hellhounds and Cerberus. This is 34 ticks faster than using the pipe shortcut, but also has additional benefits. Just like the pipe shortcut saves you the need for a dusty key, the strange floor shortcut saves you the need for anti-fire protection. It's just... These shortcuts are all so useful and they all perfectly match their agility level requirement. Taverly Dungeon is the kind of place that makes you want to go train agility so you can get these benefits. And that's been true for years. The opposite of this design is the Iowerth Dungeon. What is going on here? The Iowerth Dungeon has two agility shortcuts, one requiring 78 agility and the other requiring 84. The lower tier shortcut is right by the entrance and will immediately place you on the other side of the dungeon, which saves you 55 ticks versus running around the whole way. The higher tier shortcut for some reason is lower down, takes longer to go through, and saves you fewer ticks than the lower tier shortcut. I truly cannot figure out why this level 84 obstacle even exists, or why the requirements aren't at least flipped. Is there a reason you'd specifically want to go from Bloodvelds to Necreals back and forth? Am I, am I missing something? Please, like genuinely I am asking, let me know. What's the point? But the weirdness, nay, the badness of this shortcut pales in comparison 
to a scourge upon all agility shortcuts that Jagex has been willfully ignoring and even adding more of. These shortcuts are the equivalent of serial killers. No, I don't think I can say that. I'm speaking of... Listen, Jagex, I get that you want to make Achievement Diaries rewarding. I do because they have some really high requirements and with high requirements should come high rewards. That's why so many Achievement Diary rewards are so good, like the Karamdra Gloves teleporting you to Shiloh Village or the Artie Cape teleporting you to the monastery or the Artie Farm. But how dare you? How fucking dare you lock some agility shortcuts behind achievement diaries? Agility is already such a painful skill to train. I've already established that and literally everybody agreed with me. So why are you making it more painful by locking agility shortcuts that already have extremely high requirements behind having even more extremely high skill levels? I've already trained agility. Why are you making me train everything else? So many great shortcuts fall under this category. The Alcred Palace window, which requires 70 agility and takes you right from the glory teleport spot to the shanty pass locked behind the hard desert diary come on man the underwall tunnel between draenor and port serum which requires only 42 agility but isn't even that good and yet still for some reason requires the medium lumbridge and draenor diary but the worst offender of all is the shortcut in the cow fight lair. This shortcut requires 85 agility, which makes sense because it is one of the best shortcuts in the entire game. But to use it, you need to have completed the Elite Desert Diary. So that means to use this shortcut, you don't only need 85 agility. No, you need 91 thieving. You need 95 fletching. You need 85 prayer. And the hilarious kick in the nuts from Dragix is to even use it you gotta kill the cow fight queen up to 256 times. Jagex, why? Why, 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 why? 85 agility is so high. Do you know how many people have 85 agility? Six. Don't look that up. <laughs> oh my God, it requires 86 agility, not even 85. I was wrong. But Jagex, I know you have the capability to change. Not too long ago, there was another egregiously bad diary shortcut. This stepping stone in Shiloh Village required 77 agility and it gets you to Duradel really not that much quicker than just using the bridge, but still. The only problem is to use it, you needed the Elite Karamja Diary completed. You know what's cool about the Elite Karamja Diary? Is the infinite teleports directly to Duradel that you get from it. But Jagex identified this. They saw the flaw in their design. So four years later, they changed it. Four years. Four years? Four years. But at least you changed, Jagex, and there's still time to change with all of these. Agility sucks. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Oh boy, I've rambled for a really long time about this, haven't I? It's really concerning how many shortcuts in this game are either not that good or actively worse than just not using the shortcut, especially when also looking at their agility requirement. Yes, there are other reasons to train agility than just the shortcuts, but the shortcuts can be such a cool benefit of agility. And unfortunately, there's just so few that actually have an impact on day-to-day -day gameplay. Even some of the good ones are in completely useless locations. Though it's true. Agility shortcuts are broken. And don't forget, if you have 99 agility, you're probably broken too.